Well, okay, let's just uh, have a quick look at this. This is not really a conspiracy theory channel, but I just stumbled across this. It says, this is the uh, science channel, supposedly. And it says, what is this enormous hexagon in the Australian desert? Okay, let's play a bit of this. November 2014. The Worldview 3 satellite is passing over the vast, empty wilderness of Australia's Northwest Cape when it captures a huge symbol etched onto the Earth. <laughs> so it discovered this in 2014. It's actually been there, I think, since the uh, 60s, this particular installation. So it's not a very good, not a very good satellite, is it? The strangest thing about this image is its geometric regularity. <laughs> Why would that be? <laughs> Why would that be strange? I wonder. These lines are very straight. The markings are very clear. The shape. Yes, they are, because it's a it's a VLF antenna, and that's exactly how it has to be planned and and uh, and built. It has to be planned and built in a very in a very linear, precise fashion because it's a radio antenna. And it, it has to uh, comply with a set of mathematical rules that will make it reasonably efficient. It covers over one and a half square miles. A hexagon a mile wide in the middle of the desert. Oh, the intrigue. Um, now, no, he says in the middle of the desert. Uh, it's not in the middle of the desert. In, in the middle of the desert, it's nowhere near the desert. In fact, uh, I'll show you the uh, I'll show you the very same installation on Google Earth uh, immediately following this clip. This site is one of the furthest points west on the Australian continent. It's miles from anything. Close. Mm, well, it's not that far. It's not that far from the town of Exmouth. There's a lot of tourism up there. A lot of fishing. Um, diving, all that sort of stuff. Awful lot of tourism up on that um, on that northwest cape, uh, up around the that uh, around the town of Exmouth and the Exmouth Peninsula there, and around the um, uh, around those antennas. I've actually had lunch directly opposite on the beach uh, from the uh, uh, from those antennas. Analysis of the image reveals that at the points of the hexagram there are thin spike-like structures casting long shadows. Zooming in on this image, we see a massive array of antenna. So the original pattern we saw was actually roads connecting all these antenna for service. This is no mine. The Worldview 3 satellite has captured an aerial image of the most secretive and controversial military site in Australia. Mm, no. I would say the most sec secretive and controversial site in Australia is undoubtedly Pine Gap. A site established by the U.S. military. It's called... And when was it established? Base Harold Holt, and it's a U.S. Navy, Australian Navy collaboration. They use it to communicate with ships all over the world. The base is rumored to operate top-secret space surveillance systems developed at White Sands Missile Range. Um, no, this would not be used for space surveillance. This would be used for communicating with submerged submarines. You, that's what you need VLF for. Um, you don't need VLF for space surveillance. You would require UHF or microwaves for space surveillance. You know, it's file, places like Filingdale's and the other Bemuse stations, they use UHF. Um, some, some stations use microwaves. Um, I'm pretty sure Filing Dales is UHF. I don't think it quite makes it up into the microwave region, but it might. Regardless, you certainly don't use VLF for space surveillance. People believe that these hexagon antenna transmit very low frequency radio waves. Well, they're right, they do. These are used, among other things, to issue orders to submerged nuclear submarines. Yes, they do. That's its primary function. Extreme low frequency ELF uh, penetrates into the water because it's got a long wavelength. It's hard to... to That's a bit like Yogi Bear, that professor, doesn't he? Yes, apparently it penetrates into the seawater to a depth of about 60 metres. Communicate to submarines really high. And that's an important thing to be able to talk to your nuclear 
skies. Some people believe that signals from the hexagon interfered with the controls of a civilian plane in 2008. Yeah, actually I wouldn't be at all surprised if that was the case. Um, you know, I think it was an Airbus uh, full of computers, full of electronic stuff. If they're flying in reasonable proximity, reasonably close proximity to a a huge communication station that's pumping out a million watts of power or um, it's capable of running two million watts um, depending on uh, you know if, if they need to pump it up a bit they can so um, if the submarine they needed to communicate with was a reason a little bit a little bit far away and uh, maybe a little bit uh, deeper than they would prefer they might have to give it a bit of welly and uh, run the two million watts, two megawatts. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me in the least if the electromagnetic field was large enough that the aircraft was actually flying through was uh, large enough to affect these, um, uh, these computer-based systems on these modern aircraft. Forcing it to make an emergency landing and it... Okay, well, it looks like the battery's gonna die. So over to the next clip. Okay, so the battery died in the camera. These clips are... I'm doing these <coughs> doing these clips in... Uh, uh, <coughs> not in the order you're seeing them. Uh, okay, so this should join on to the other bit where they were talking about the um, interference... Uh, poten potentially um, uh, uh, in interference uh, causing problems with the flight systems on a, on a scare bus or an airbus, I think it was. Uh, might, might have been a bit of Boeing, but anyway, most modern planes have all these computers on, and they're they're going to be equally as affected by strong electromagnetic fields. So um, I'll just continue on a bit from there. Provoke speculation that the site could be part of a secret radio wave weapons program. Uh, no, <laughs> no. If you put put uh, put any electronic systems in uh, close proximity to a very high power radio transmitter, and there's potential there for um, uh, interference and um, you know computers can sort of lock up and twitch and do all sorts of things um, computers on an aircraft are no different obviously the international pilots association has called for commercial aircraft to be barred from the area as a precaution i don't blame them i think if i was a uh, commercial airline pilot i wouldn't want to be flying anywhere near that place either Access to the Harold E. Holt facility is highly restricted. Uh, no, it's not. You can step over the fence and, <laughs> and walk up to any of those towers if you really wanted to. Um, it's not highly restricted at all. Um, you wouldn't be able to go in the uh, the main building there very easily. Um, but, um, you know, it's a military communications establishment. It's going to have security. That's obvious. It's not highly restricted. Uh, entry to Pine Gap is highly restricted, for sure. Entry to this place, nah. Pine Gap, you can't get that close to it. But uh, this place, as I say, you can you can walk up to the perimeter fence. Perimeter fence is waist high. You can step over it. You can walk around under those antennas if you were uh, uh, crazy enough to uh, want to do that. Um, so no, it's not highly restricted at all. Even today, the secrets of what goes on here remain classified. Well, they're bound to. It's a military communications base. There's nothing unusual about that at all. Yeah, OK. OK, so here's the Harold E. Holt VLF uh, submarine communication station, and it's on the Exmouth Peninsula in Western Australia. Uh, you can see Harold E. Holt communication station VLF towers. Now they're talking about this very geometric pattern and they're saying it's in the middle of the Australian desert. Uh, actually, no, it isn't. It's going the wrong way. Hang on, let's just get this right. So let's see where this... That they're saying that uh, this Harold E. Holt VLF communication station is in the middle of the Australian desert. Hmm. Looks more like it's on a peninsula to me. Does that look like it's in the middle of the desert to you? Uh, <laughs> you got the town of Exmouth there as well, of course. 
this is all open to the public. The fence around the base you could step over if you wanted to. It's not a high security area. It's nowhere near at the sort of security that you'd see some, uh, at somewhere like Pine Gap, for example. So let's go out and out and out. So it's right up the top of that little peninsula, right on the right on the top of Australia, on that uh, the tip of uh, Western Australia, on that peninsula. So in the middle of the Australian desert, no, it isn't. Uh, sort of here might be in the middle of the Australian desert. That's where you'd find Pine Gap. And you find uh, the Jindalee over the horizon radar station near Alice Springs. But uh, this way over here is nowhere near the middle of the desert. Certainly not in the middle of the desert. So sensationalistic twaddle. And this big geometric pattern, this big mysterious geometric pattern, is in fact a Trideco <coughs> VLF antenna. Now, uh, this clip is going to be somewhere in two or three clips I'm going to join together, or maybe one or two clips I'm going to join together. So I may have mentioned this before, but what I'll do is I'll put a link below to um, the Trideco VLF antenna and um, also to uh, Cutler which is a uh, base in America, a communications base in America that has two of these two of these Trideco antennas next to each other on a, on a very similar peninsula. So it's ocean almost all the way around it. And that's the way these VLF antennas work. They do like to be surrounded by water, highly conductive ground. And the way it works is you've got a cent central tower here, which actually works as a short monopole and it radiates the signal and all these petals you can't see them all overly clearly on this uh, on this um, Google Earth image but uh, I'll see if I can find a, uh, a sketch and show you a sketch of a Trideco antenna and you'll see that there are these sort of petal panels if you like and they are a capacity hat for the vertical radiator because it's such a low frequency you're dealing with wavelengths of 20 kilometers and um, I think the, uh, the the actual radiating element is only about 1,200 feet tall, maybe 1,300 feet tall. So it's a very small fraction of a wavelength. So it needs all this big capacity, this massive capacity hat on the top uh, to make it radiate efficiently. OK, uh, I'll end that clip there. So on the right-hand side there, we have the Trideco antenna. So if you could see the... Uh, uh, the aerial view or the plan view of the Harold E. Holt communication station on the northwest Cape in Western Australia, you would see this arrangement here. So you have these all these wires coming out to form these petals basically. It looks a bit like a flower when you look down on it and you're looking down on that central vertical radiator which is 12 or 1300 feet tall uh, in the middle there and uh, all these wires here are arranged to provide a huge capacity hat for that antenna to make the short antenna radiate efficiently and that's what it looks like from the side down here you've got a central tower and then you've got uh, a ring of smaller towers and another ring of smaller towers so you have a ring of smaller towers here in these midpoints here to support the waistbands if you like of these diamonds and then you have another ring of the smaller towers I say smaller towers they're still about a thousand feet high uh, 900 feet high, something like that, all around the outside to support the ends of these cables. So there's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a, it's just a, a, a box standard uh, VLF antenna used for uh, talking to um, submerged submarines. Very low frequencies. Use about a million watts of power. Um, I think it's on 14 and uh, 28 kilohertz, something like that, harmonically related, related channels that it uses. It can run 2 megawatts apparently, but they don't do that unless they absolutely have to. Simply because of the power consumption effects it might have on the, on the local town. I've actually been there and um, I've been, uh, been to this establishment. Not inside it, but right up to the fence. As I say, the, the, the fence is only waist high, you can, you can climb over it. Um, it's not really a, uh, not a high security area at all. I didn't see any patrols while I was there. There's even a board, there's a plaque on a, on a stick telling you the operating frequencies and it tells you that they use a 
Continental Electronics transmitter that's capable of 2 megawatts. It tells you what frequencies they use. And it tells you that most of the time they just run it at 1 megawatt. So you know, there's nothing... Uh, uh, nothing uh, nothing super secret about it. Well, not these days anyway. Okay, uh, this might be the end of the video. If it is, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Okay, so here's a planned view of a similar station using two of these uh, Tri-Deco tri uh, VLF antennas. This one is at Cutler, Maine in, the Ameri in America, the United States. And again, you can see that they love putting these sort of stations on a peninsula where they're almost completely surrounded by water. It's exactly the same on the Northwest Cape. It's got no, they certainly don't stick them in the middle of the desert. So that's uh, Cutler Main VLF um, communication station using two of the Tri-Deco VLF antennas. So the Northwest Cape only has one. So um, yeah, there's nothing mysterious or sinister uh, about these things at all. I'll see if I can. I'll see if I can have a look at Cutler Main on uh, on Google Earth. Now, uh, if I can't, uh, this will be the end of this video. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll uh, I'll leave some links below to um, Cutler and the Northwest Cape and uh, Tri-Deco antennas. VLF antennas, and you can uh, you can you can just click on the links and have a look for yourself. Um, so if this doesn't continue with a Google Earth view of Cutler, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Okay, so here is Cutler, Maine, in uh, the United States, on the uh, northeastern seaboard. Little peninsula sticking out there. Uh, as you can see, you've got the the peninsula here almost completely surrounded by water and if we zoom in there's two of these uh, two of these antennas and that one there is there's the central mast there's the masts around it, the inner circle of masts there's the outer circle of masts there and there's another one just above it there. There's a central mast there. Where's my pen? There. Central mast there. There we go. There's the central mast. And there's the little mast around it. Exactly the same. Um, Tri-deco antennas, but two of them at uh, Cutler Main. VLF comms to submerged submarines. Looks a little bit greener, of course, because it's not northwestern Australia. But, um, yeah, it's exactly the same. And, uh, as I've said uh, on the previous clip, I'll leave the links below. So, uh, uh, nothing, nothing weird or sinister about these VLF uh, uh, comms antennas. That's what they are. They're just, for, uh, they're just communications antennas they're using very low frequencies for um, talking to submerged submarines. Um, there we are. So, uh, that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.